Experiment. Explore. Enjoy. Okay, so we're here with Jim at the 512 stand. How's it going, Jim? It's going good. Yeah. We've got a great super booth. We're having a lot of fun here. Exactly. Uh, I've been showing the Mark II versions of the vector sequencer and the expander. So the original vector, I, I'm not sure, came out five or six years ago. And um, around last spring, April, year ago, um, when chips were still pretty hard to get, we were able to get some, uh, some nice, faster, newer chips. And we basically committed then to, uh, to do a revision of the hardware. Um, it's still very much the same sequencer. The panel's almost exactly the same. The expander is uh, 8 HP now instead of 12. Um, Great. And the software is 95% the same. We've just, uh, the lower level code is to accommodate the new hardware and a few new I.O. features. Uh, support for the Mark 1s will continue as before, no changes there. Uh, also, the, the new expander will work with the older sequencer and the old expander will work with the new sequencer. So what's changed on the panel? Um, on the jacks, we were able to squeeze in a couple of extra CV outputs, CVX and Y, and these give us, uh, they're kind of free agents, they can be pitch or velocity. Uh, same thing on the expander, the velocity outputs can now do velocity or pitch. Um, and then before I cover what's different in the software, just kind of a very, very brief introduction. Uh, this is a digital sequencer with uh, an analog style control interface, meaning that we've got eight knobs. You can edit eight steps at a time, uh, 16 step patterns. And um, I can, all the edit modes are along the top. We have a mix of uh, MIDI and uh, CVIO. Uh, all of it is freely assignable, so you can really customize it. If you want to send everything out USB MIDI to your computer, you can do that. Mm. Uh, with the new output options, you can do up to 12 pitch CVs and I think 20 different gates, uh, wow. however you want to assign them to different parts. There are eight parts on board. They can be monophonic. You can do eight four-note chords, or you can do four-lane drums. Um, all the edit modes are along the top. I can start a new sequence by dialing in gate values like this. I can use encoder nine over here to do them all at the same time. Oh, that's neat. Go back to pitch, edit my pitch values. Uh, for demos, I always stick with eight step patterns just to make it easier to follow, but you can go up to 64 steps on presets if you like. Um, I should also mention that we have um, presets on each part. On the old expand, on the, sorry, on the old vector, we could do 20 presets for 16 steps patterns. Uh, on the new one, we're up to 42. So right. we've more than doubled the preset space. Um, we've also added more space for each preset for um, new parameters. So um, basic parameters are pitch and glide, gate time and groove, velocity, as well as some CCs, step length, repeat, and ratchet, um, and then chance operations, which are unique to the vector. So on each step, you get a choice of about 40 different options. You can mute steps, you can skip them, you can jump around the sequence, you can adjust velocity or gate time, add ratchets, pitch changes. So if I want, I can say, I can select a few steps, and I say I want to skip those with a probability of about a, you know, 30%, or I can uh, pick a couple other steps and say, I want to do a pitch adjustment, right? I want to go up a fifth, which is seven semitones. I can do that, say, half the time, or I could do it all the time and say, but only every odd time through the pattern. Nice. So now I've taken an eight-step pattern and turned it into something that's going to be a little different every time around. Amazing. If I want to get this back on a bar grid, I can go over to sequence controls and say, I want to force this thing to reset every 16 beats. So, but then I can start, you know, I can play around with the link, all these other parameters. Every four bars, it's going to lock back to the grid. Uh, new in version two, 
we now have room for two sets of chance operations. So you can actually put two operations on one step. Um, another little trick I've been working with is what we call free run. So say if I set gate to free run at three steps, even though the main sequence is eight steps, up here, gates will only be three steps long, which is a really good way to get some interesting syncopated rhythms going. Mm. It seems like a really responsive tool you've got yeah, here. Yeah, quick, yeah, quick yeah, yeah. I, I, well. I wanted it so that there's definitely a lot of depth here, uh, but I wanted it so that you could have a nice spacious UI with lots of visual feedback. Um, everything is fairly flat, right? You jump around very quickly uh, on the UI, start improvising with something very simple pattern, and then you can slowly extend it and build into a longer pattern. You can start making new presets. Uh, you can arrange them into playlists. Uh, so I can say preset one, play for two bars, and go to preset two, preset two, play for four bars, That's then go great. back to preset one, repeat that a few times. That's a great feature. Uh, you can set up scenes where you're basically setting what presets across all eight parts serve in that scene. Uh, you can plug in a launch pad. Oh yeah, you got a launch pad. Um, you get an overview page, so you can select parts, see activity, record enables, mutes for all eight parts, and then submutes for polyphonic parts. So these are submutes for chord parts five and six, and then drum parts seven and eight. Um, and you which, can either what yes. launch pads is that compatible with? Uh, any of the Mark Threes, so the Mini Mark Three, the Launchpad X, and the Pro Mark Three. Superb. Uh, you can also there's also a preset page, which is great for performance. So you can select your presets as you like. You can also push a button over here and select a whole row of presets. There's a couple of keyboard layouts you can use for step sequencing or even just to play a little solo. And then you can even dive in and edit individual sequences. Um, this works great for drum sequences because so you can like, very quickly tap in patterns like that. Um, so. You know, it really kind of, you can start with a very small kernel of an idea and steadily develop it, add some new parts, build your presets, um, plug in a launch pad, take it out and perform. Mm. Uh, I've been talking with a lot of musicians around and uh, how they're using the vector and performances and what features they're looking for in terms of being able to have a more reliable set. You know, like things like having a lockdown mode where it doesn't save your changes so you know you can you know, if you accidentally change something or intentionally change something, you can still get back to where you started. I'm uh, interested to know the functionality of the USB port here. What, uh, what these are both for MIDI. Uh, I've got a launch pad plugged into the, uh, the USB A port. You could also plug in any MIDI keyboard. The B port is for a computer, uh, so you can do sync and MIDI. Um, so actually, when I play, I, uh, I use a laptop for the mixer and also to host some, a couple of polyphonic plugins. I run all the composition is on the vector. I don't even send sync to the computer. I just send USB MIDI to play um, to play sounds, and then I route audio into the laptop for mixing. Great, great. And is the vector sequencer two is that available now? This will be available in June. Excellent. So we're in okay. beta test now. We'll be finishing it up and getting it out to dealers as quickly as we can. Great. And do you have a rough price in mind? Uh, the price for the vector stays the same, seven fifty nine US. Mm -hmm. And then the expander drops a little bit. It's now down to 289 US. OK, great. Well, it looks fully featured. Um, and you've clearly thought of exactly what people need for playing live and for uh, the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing us today. All really right. Thanks for coming by.